Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to episode 23 of Knittings and Sewings, a podcast about all things knitting, spinning, weaving, <laughs> sewing, crochet, and any variety of fiber arts uh, that we happen to get up to. Today, Walter is here with me. Uh, we're into the new year already, and so we wanted to... Uh, tell you a little bit about what we're getting up to and what we hope to be getting up to in the new year. To begin, um, I am drinking today out of my Elvis mug. It's kind of hard to see in the light, but this is my Elvis Presley mug, and there is on the side a guitar. I am a fan of Elvis Presley. I Actually, he was a little bit before my time, right, Walter? I was more in his daughter Lisa Marie's time. But... I did, uh, I have enjoyed learning more about Elvis Presley. In recent years, I've become a fan. I wasn't always necessarily a fan because I wasn't, again, that was, I was more appreciating bands in the 70s as I was a teenager. So he was more probably in my mother's generation. And so anyway, but I do love Elvis Presley. And so I wanted to uh, turn out of my mug today and, and wish him a happy birthday on January 8th. And uh, I'm drinking today, I sh if I were drinking in true Elvis Presley uh, taste, I would be drinking uh, some peanut butter and banana coffee, which I have bought before from Smart Sips. But today I don't have that, so I'm drinking uh, Bones Coffee Brownie and Beyond, which is one of their specialty flavors, and I really enjoy this. It has a nice chocolatey taste. So that is what I am drinking today. Now, let's talk about what we have finished because, believe it or not, I managed at the very end, the last day of the year on December 31st, I managed to finish my Painting Bricks socks. These are Stephen West's Painting Bricks socks that um, I've been working on for quite a while. I kind of had set them aside for a while. But I wanted to finish these up because they are a gift for my mother. She, um, she loves these socks, and, and I think it will really go along well with her winter wardrobe. What I like about these socks, and want to highlight for any of you who might be considering making them, is that not only are they very easy, but also they make use of your scrap yarn. So if you have any leftover sock yarn, which I had quite a few balls, that I wanted to use, um, then you can make use of these in a different patterning and it does use an easy slip stitch pattern and you don't need a great deal left of if you have some leftover yarns or if you had many skeins left over from an advent calendar it would also be a good use of many skeins. So you can make, you can either choose to make all of the little inserts one color or you can do multiple colors like I have done. And one thing I did to make these easier was I used Flexi Flips. Uh, this is, I think, an, uh, uh, an Addy brand. I'm not sure, but there are different brands that they have of these. But basically, they're the flexible. And not everybody likes these, you know. Everybody has their own way, preferred way of making socks. But basically, uh, you get three of these in a pack. And I like them so well, I now have two packs of them. But what they do is you use three of them to make your socks. Two to hold the legs, and then the third one to knit with. And so um, I really enjoyed making them with Flexi Flips, and I'm going to be using those on my socks further along in the year as I make other socks. But I enjoyed finishing these up on the very last day of the year. And um, it was a good way to start the new year with a little bit of instant gratification success. I've been working on these off and on for a few months, and they've been going really slow because I've been putting them down in between other projects. But I do love these socks, and I think they are easy and fun, and, uh, you know, I was always eager to get to the next color. And so um, one thing I did choose to change about these, though, he has on the heel he made a garter stitch heel uh, and garter stitch toe. I chose instead to make a regular heel flap and traditional heel and toe. And so um, I used the crazy um, sock lady, what is her name? 
I'll just put a link up to her pattern, but it's her vanilla sock. Uh, but Crazy Sock Lady, her name is Kaylin. I chose to use her more traditional heel and toe rather because I felt it might be a little bit more durable. But I don't know. A lot of people have used the garter stitch heel and toe, and I assume it went well for them. Uh, but if you have tried using the garter stitch heel and toe, let me know how that worked out. I think I'm going to make another pair of these maybe this year uh, because I did enjoy the process, and I have a lot of leftover little bits and bobs of sock yarn. So I may try to make another pair in the new year. Uh, but when I do that, I'm going to, I think, try the traditional, or excuse me, the uh, garter stitch heel and toe that were on the pattern. So if you've made any of these, let me know how you like them. And did you use a garter stitch heel and toe? I just have to be careful maybe going down a needle size. I already use a size zero because I'm a loose knitter. I'm a loose sock knitter. And I usually use a size zero. So I may have to go down to double zero if I do the garter stitch heel and toe. And that's why I chose not to do it. Because I tried it at first and it, my stitch gauge looked a little bit loose. So I wanted these to be durable, so I went ahead and went with the uh, regular uh, heel flap, which I always like the traditional heel flap and regular toe. But anyway, these were very fun. I enjoyed them, and I would highly recommend them to any of you who um, enjoy sock knitting. I think they're one of his, my favorite pairs of the sock book that he put out, the e-book. These were ones that immediately appealed to me. So I will definitely be making more in a variety of colors. But they are a lot of fun. While we're talking about Elvis Presley, uh, uh, his birthday is coming up, as I said, and it may be already passed by the time this video is released. I'm not sure. But I wanted to talk a little bit about um, how I do really enjoy his music and I enjoy, um, you know, the mystery of his life. He had a very interesting life. Um, I've read a lot of biographies about him and, and seen a lot of YouTubes, and particularly um, I enjoy watching the Bobby Smith and Joe Smith uh, Elvis Fans Matter. I enjoy those YouTubes because they tell a lot of stories back from when Elvis uh, was, when they were living with him. And Billy is his first cousin on his mother's side, so Billy knows quite about him from way back. And Billy is, and his wife are both getting elderly nowadays, but they have a lot of really funny, amusing, and, and uh, touching stories about their life with him. So um, I feel like, you know, I've really enjoyed his stories, and I will put a link up to the Elvis Fans Matter if any of you care to go check out that uh, YouTube podcast. I find it really entertaining. And I find uh, both Billy and Joe very likable, great people. So I enjoyed seeing that. I also enjoyed the original Elvis movie that they came out with about a year ago with Tom Hanks. And my mom and I went to see that with Bob, and we all really enjoyed that. In fact, I think we saw it twice on the big screen. And I don't often see uh, movies on the big screen anymore. Usually I um, just wait until they come, you know, to my, where I can get them uh, and see them at home. But I decided to go see it on the big screen twice, and I really enjoyed that uh, Austin um, Butler, you know, uh, portrayal of Elvis. And uh, I really enjoyed that whole movie, and, and like I said, that, that really even ignited more my interest and my um, enjoyment of Elvis's music. And one of, I have to say my favorite Elvis song is probably... Uh, Suspicious Minds. I even liked that as a child. I thought that was a really, um, I don't know, just a song that moved me a lot. I love Suspicious Minds. Um, and also, I enjoyed Unchained Melody. There were several different Elvis songs. I more liked the 70s and 60s, some of his songs, than the uh, early 50s, or, you know, the 50s. I wasn't into, like, jailhouse rock and that kind of stuff. But... Um, I have really enjoyed um, hearing about his life and, and what I did recently in the spirit of, you know, fun was to read a book. Again, this is all fiction, but it's called uh, Graceland by Nancy Crochier. 
C-R-O-C-H-I-E-R-E. And this is a really fun, light, chiclet type read. And um, it's about three generations of women. There's a, the main heroine I would say is probably in her late 40s. And her mother is in her early 80s. And then the daughter is just about college age or late high school. I think college. Um, but it's really a journey of self-discovery. And it's a road trip novel, which I always enjoy road trip novels. So this is a lot of fun. And um, I enjoyed it because of the dealings of the three generations and they had uh, chapters written in each one of their perspectives. Uh, what do you think, Walter? Is this a good book? <laughs> um, I enjoyed it a lot. I, I thought it was fun and funny. It had little bits of Elvis. There's not a lot of it other than the fact that the three women are trying to go on a journey to Graceland because the grandmother has a dream of going to Graceland and she used to know the king or th thought she knew him when she was young. And so um, it's just a fun, silly story, but there is a lot of self-discovery between the two, uh, the mother and the daughter in particular, and the journey with the granddaughter brings out a lot of family secrets and a lot of really uh, self-discovery and self-development among all three of the characters. So I really liked it and uh, you know, I would, I would read it again, any other books. I think they're a fun read. So if you are wanting, uh, regardless of whether you like Elvis or not, if you're wanting a fun read, I would suggest Graceland as a fun chick lit that most people would probably enjoy. If you've read it, let me know. And if you read it later, let me know what you think. Well, I told you in the last episode, episode 22, that I would be wearing my favorite project from 2023. And I want to show it to you right now, since Walter is sitting on me, I don't want to put it on, but I will put it on here. Uh, you'll see me wearing it here in a moment. I have been wearing this lately because we've been having some kind of warmer weather than expected. So um, anyway, I want, don't know if you can see it, but I've also shown it on a previous podcast. I'm going to show you how it is when I'm wearing it here. Uh, we'll get a shot of that and put it up. Maybe Bob will put it up in the video. But anyway, I wanted to say that out of all the projects that I worked on in 2023, several of them were long-term projects that are not yet finished. Um, and so, but this one I did finish, and I also finished two other jeans jackets. Um, and I have to say that this UFO, uh, my alien jacket, is my all-time favorite. And you might say, well, why is that? Because, you know, I surely have created other things other people suggested they liked better. For example, I made the Killer Queen shawl. I made the Easy Crochet uh, top, that gray top that I made that I wear in the summer. And many of you... When I mentioned this, um, I'm sure you thought I was going to select one of those projects. But instead, I picked this. And I tell you, I also enjoyed the other two vests, I mean uh, jackets, jeans jackets that I did, including the Create jacket, this one, and then the, uh, the Woven jacket, where I did the overshot on the back and put my weaving into the back panel and then in the front oops in the front I had um, a little bit of the detail with the silver detail around the overshot on the back now you may wonder why would I say my alien jacket and these other jackets are among my favorite it's actually the alien is my very favorite but I enjoyed making all of them and I have especially enjoyed wearing the alien one. Well, first of all, you know I have a very strong love of science fiction. And, uh, and I do like alien type phenomena. Uh, I'm not necessarily one of those people that are going to go around wearing a foil hat all the time. Um, I don't uh, believe in conspiracy theories or those kind of things. 
uh, and I don't believe aliens are taking over the earth or any of that, but I do have a fascination with all kinds of different science fiction and concepts like that. And so um, the idea of, you know, there being life on other planets, I certainly do believe that. I don't know what form they take. But at any rate, I love the playfulness of the alien jacket. That is what I love about it. The creativity that I poured into planning and making that jacket were really, for me, what this channel and my creative work is all about in the fiber arts. So it reminded me of how much I enjoy making them and again, the fun, whimsical theme of the aliens, the alien jacket really ignited uh, a lot of fun and creativity in my life. So it was over the summer when I made that. I really enjoyed it. And every now and then, you know, I, I get to wear it depending on our weather here. Uh, I even wore it the other day to Costco because our weather has been unseasonably warm and I didn't need a heavy coat. So whenever I get a chance to wear it, I enjoy it. And that's ultimately what this is all about, is having fun, expanding your creativity. And uh, sometimes the projects that we love the most, I don't know about you, but some of the projects that I love the most aren't necessarily the ones that other people like the most. Um, I have some kind of different taste at times. And sometimes I do tend to like flashy things and, uh, you know, blingy things, glitzy things. And some of the things that I most enjoy and appreciate in my own work aren't always the same projects that other people uh, compliment me on. So anyway, I just wanted to say that that is my very favorite. Now, I've done a lot of things I've enjoyed this year and probably other ones that are more wearable and maybe even more flattering. Uh, but that is just what I always want to keep in my work is the spirit of fun and the whimsical nature is just always going to be the thing that wins the day for me. Thinking of that, I am, as I told you in the last episode, I'm not going to be making a long list of project resolutions or, you know, a detailed project plan because I really want... <laughs> I want to enjoy my projects more. One thing I learned by my visit to Sin City Knits, or was reminded of, are two things. Number one, the fact that it's really good to sometimes have more instant gratification projects. Things like this little scarf. Um, boy, it's caught in Walter's toenail here just a minute. The little scarf, for example, that Debbie made in her shop. This would be a really quick knit. Uh, things like the hand warmers and the neck warmer, all the things, a hat, all the things that we can do fairly quickly without a lot of effort, but just, you know, that feeling of getting something done and having fun while doing it is what I'm going to be looking to do more of next year. More fun, spontaneous things. And um, I'm also going to really feel free to let projects go. If there is something I'm not enjoying, particularly uh, like the MCAL this year, the shawl I started, I really put too much time and effort into that and should have let it go quicker. And so for this year, what I intend on doing, I've already just, my head is filled with all kinds of ideas. My head is popping like a popcorn popper full of ideas and fun projects that I would like to undertake. I am going to try to stick to one major project at a time, like a sweater. If it's a sweater or a big shawl or something like that, I don't want to have several major projects going at once unless, you know, if I feel like it, I will. But I think in general, like right now, I'm finishing up my ranunculus sweater, and I'm doing the sleeves on that. And so I'm not going to start another sweater probably until I get those sleeves finished because I want to go ahead and get those done. I'm very motivated to wear my ranunculus. And so that's an example. I will probably wait to start another sweater. I'm kind of in a sweater frame of mind right now, but I'm going to probably wait to uh, cast on another sweater until I finish up those sleeves. But overall, I'm going to feel a lot more free to start projects and maybe have more things on the needles than I have in the past. 
and uh, again to put them down when I feel like it and to pick them up again when I when I also feel like it to go more by whatever I'm feeling at the moment be a little bit more spontaneous than I normally am because I am a real planner and I just need to let go of that the planning I need to do in my work and which serves me very well in my professional life is not necessarily what I need to do to have fun in my craft life so I'm going to let those creative sparks fly a lot more often and I also uh, secondly I think uh, is I want to connect more with other knitters spinners weavers sewists I want to get a lot more creative energy and sharing my projects with other people not just watching um, other people do it on YouTube I still will definitely be tuning into all kinds of YouTube channels because they are inspiring also but I need to also have some real life interaction with other creative people and so I will be in fact I've already planned and have set up a date to go to a local coffee shop with some of my knitting friends and get together to plan an in-person meeting in January and I'll be telling you how that goes but do you have some real life knitting or spinning or crochet or weaving friends in your life that you regularly get together with um, with my limited time I've always felt you know are, especially since the pandemic I felt like you know I've kind of shortchanged that interaction but like I said in thinking about how this year has gone and what I want to change for the new year I definitely want more in-person interaction with my friends, with my family, uh, with my knitting peeps as well. So when I say knitting peeps, I mean all the things, crochet, knitting, spinning, weaving, all sewing, all those things. But I do want to have more real in-life interaction with real people, and um, I hope that that will enrich me and expand my creativity even more. Tell me what you want to do more of in the new year. And is there anything you want to do less of? Let me know in the comments. One more little thing I wanted to add about the Graceland book. I did check out, after saying I would read a lot more of her books in the future, with Nancy Crochera, just wanted to uh, point out that this is actually her debut novel. So it's all the better knowing that. She did a phenomenal job on this book. And she, the only other book she has is uh, she started her writing career doing Irma Bombeck kind of uh, being a mom funny essays. So with that, you can uh, you may not know who Irma Bombeck is, but uh, she was a very funny uh, comedian and essayist uh, many many years ago. So this is kind of like uh, how she got Nancy got her start writing. So she is very funny. That just gives you an idea. But she doesn't have any other novels, unfortunately but I'll be looking for future books by this author. Now I want to talk about the projects I will be doing in or thinking about in 2024. Unlike last year, I don't want to have an actual make nine list like so many other crafters do. I found that kind of restrictive. I've been doing it the last two or three years. And so I'm going to be, uh, instead of doing that, I am going to continue my practice of jotting down every day throughout the year what crafting I was able to get done that day. Uh, it kind of was like a running, um, you know, just a uh, summary of what I was doing and if I worked on more than one project for the day or whatnot. And so I will be continuing that practice and I saved them throughout the year. This is the last day of last year and it was 31 pages. So I write large, but it shows you how that was really a help to me in getting a lot more done in 2023 so this is my book for 2023 and typically it's a three ring binder what I do is toward the end of the year which I just went through my year in review uh, that I do on a reflecting of my creative year this is how my book ended up I ended up doing a lot of wonderful projects I put inside the notebook the uh, project notes the patterns I used and swatches of the yarn and any kind of notes like that, similar to what you would put on your Ravelry electronic record. And so I have started my new year for 2024, very similar notebook, um, 
However, what I did at the end of the that year between Christmas and New Year's, well, I'm having things fall out. The year between uh, the week between Christmas and New Year's, uh, where you have that kind of lull week. What I did during that week was to take out the some of the best patterns that I did not get to do last year that still intrigued me, and I moved them into my 2024 notebook. So that's the process I have. It's not exactly a make nine, but it, what it is is more of an inspiration for a future if I do uh, want some ideas of what I have admired and wanted to do that I can turn to the notebook. But more importantly, it is a record of my active creativity for the year. So I will keep, keep doing that. I found it a really helpful tool that I will continue for this year. And then another thing I want to briefly touch on is I've always had a word for the year. Over the past 20 years or so, I have always had a word theme and instead of resolutions. So this year, my word is going to be connect because what I want to do is to spend more time connecting with people in real life spending less time on my devices. I still will read uh, a lot of books and watch a lot of YouTubes and gather inspiration from others via YouTube, definitely. However, I do want to spend real time with my real uh, friends, relatives, knitting peeps, crafting friends. And so, uh, like for example, last night, since my word was connect, I did go out to see a play, Arsenic and Old Lace, with a friend of mine and as well as with Bob and we hadn't been to that local theater in quite some time and I do love theater and seeing live plays so we got to see that oldie but goodie chestnut uh, play that many of us have seen during high school or maybe even some of you may have acted in a play if you were involved in theater but our sneak and old lace was really fun to go get out and watch that it was a very cold night and so I had to overcome my desire to stay home and stay cozy at home rather than to get out and be in real life with a real activity with a, with a friend of mine. So we enjoy doing that and I want to do more of that. The best thing I'm going to do, I'm really excited about uh, in light of this connect goal is my friend Carolyn and I are starting a real life, in real life knitting group. We've had a spinning group all through 2023 and we enjoyed that. So we decided to also have a knitting slash crochet group. Uh, I think it's almost equal parts knitting and crochet of, among our members, and many of us are multi -craftal. But we're going to start that starting this afternoon. I'm so excited to go meet some people in real life at a coffee shop and hang out. So I'll be telling you more about how that worked out next time. But in the meantime, I want to end this podcast, as I always say, and it means even more to me after living it for this last year with the focus on love what you're making and wear what you make. Thanks so much, everybody.